Welcome back, Aces people. So, we're going to be doing some install videos for you. Some good videos. Nice, smooth, long, drawn out, very informative videos. Really, just going over the ease of install. Because, I mean, it seems like a lot to do, but it's really not a lot to do. There's a few hookups, a few wires, a few things to do, a couple things to set up. But, it's really kind of easy as it goes. So... That's the, that's the direction we want to go in this, is make something that's substantial, but make it also easy to do and easy to understand. So we're going to make more videos so you can more easily understand it. Um, we're going to start with, well, first, we're not going to make like a three hour long video. It's a very long video and you have to scroll forever to figure out where you want to go. We're going to make shorter videos, really focusing on each individual little part of what I'm hooking up, why I'm doing it, the methodology behind it. Um, and just really clearing the air on some questions that I've seen pop up. I want to try to cover all those as I'm doing this install. We will start at the tippy toppy of the motor. So if you want to go ahead and skip to that, just uh, click a link. I, I think I'll have the editors put it about right there. So that'll be bit, this is Ben's job to put the thing right here. But we'll, uh, we'll get into the hardware, the intake, how I like to lay it out, what injectors I'm using, what throttle body I'm using and why. I mean, we got our blazer here. We've got a Cathedral Port Gen 4 LS 4L60E two-wheel drive. We're going to be going drive by wire. We're going to be going jackpot pro. We're going to hit up the handheld for all those basic adjustments there, how to get it running and driving down the street. We're going to do as much tuning as we can on this, the best install we can do with this platform, all the way up to the point of we're going to get into some laptop stuff. And we're also going to get a special friend of mine has another... Um, Gen 4 6 liter, I think it is. He has a turbo. We're going to add that in right at the end about some of that turbo tuning as well. So hang out with us here. Check out the videos. If we're not answering the questions, just hit us up in comments and let us know what more do you really want out of this because we will do that. What else do you want to know? I mean, we're going to go through this thing and just check as many boxes as possible for you, the people. So let's, uh, let's talk about the intake and some hardware. Oh, oh, there's fuel. So there's a reason that I brought the intake outside to explain it to you guys. The, uh, as you know, I pulled all this off the blazer. It is a slightly used system, but the going back together is why we are joining up today. I wanted to talk about the layout of how I've configured this particular intake for the blazer we're working on. So the gaskets, they're seated in nice. I actually suspected a bit of an intake leak. That's why we're doing maintenance on it and just like, yeah, let's film it. This is gonna be great. We're putting a big fat cam in there. It's gonna be amazing. So. We're here. I was suspecting an intake leak on this. Not the case. The intake leak was that poorly made vacuum cap that I just got out of a 10 pack, you know? This guy right here, leaking. That was my intake leak. So, it's a maintenance thing. I'm going to use a better cap. I'm probably going to pull these out and put plugs in them. I've got my hose over here for my brake booster. That's important. You want to install these kind of things before you put the intake on. Otherwise, you have to take it back off. It's, not, it's no fun. It's no fun. So, on the fuel rails, you can see here, we're using EV1 style injectors. This is a Pico body, short body EV1 on our rails. And I'm using these because, well, they're 65 pound an hour injectors, which is going to add slightly different method of tuning and getting it set up. And this is, well, it's a positive thing because it gives you guys a different idea of some of the things you kind of got to do. The fuel pressure transducer. I got it right in here on this side because the fuel kind of comes up and in in a weird way. We'll, we'll cover that whenever I go to install it. The throttle body, it's a little bit used and abused, but this I think this was one of our first production prototypes. I don't even know if it has a serial number. It uses, um, I think they're two and some change long, like a M6 by 1.0 bolts that hold these things in there. There's a flat washer, lock washer. After you get them in, you get the O-ring mounted. They're pretty secure. We'll probably get some B-roll and add in here too, just for, you know, some of the beautification of it. But I got this set up like this. It's a little bit different than a lot of people do, but I'm running the, the transfer tube on the backside low because it clears everything and looks better under the hood. I got my breather hose right here over here for the uh, PC, not the PCV valve, the, uh, the brake booster. It's plenty of good length for the install we got going on. 1041 map sensor is a three bar map sensor. So we will eventually go boost it on a supercharged application, uh, hopefully sooner than later. And then because of the alternator orientation, we got this blank plug right here because we can't run the fuel out because there's an alternator that sits right here and blocks all of this. So just be mindful of where you're putting your, uh, your fittings, your crossovers, your fuel pressure sensors, 
It doesn't have to go here. You can put it back here, but it'll get in the way of the firewall. So just some things to consider when you're setting these things up. So we'll, we'll get into how I got my coils mounted. Let me grab those real fast. So back to my coil brackets. I used the factory coil brackets that came off of this uh, fourth gen engine. It has the same bolt pattern as our ACES coils. I went ahead and pre-installed them. So if you've ever done these before, you kind of realize if you've got an LS swap vehicle that you're, you're interfering with the firewall, the heater box, a thousand other things around it. So populate your brackets first. And they go on a lot easier. Trust me. I've done a few of these. Um, ACES coils. These are the A, let's see, what are they? What are they? AC 2011s. The AC 2011s, match up with the 2011 part number on top of the jackpot. That means that they go with that jackpot. If you got a full house, that'll be a 2010 part number. Whole different wiring on that coil. These are smart coils. They got, they got some drivers and chipsets inside. It's really it's quite nice. So also to go with these coils right here that we'll be installing these here in, in just a bit, but I used a Aces fuel injection 135 ceramic boot end, and then I just made my own little custom boot on the uh, on the other end of the appropriate length. So this engine does have headers. It's got swap headers on it. They had to be modified because nothing really fits a blazer, as I found out. So thankfully, there's TIG welding skills involved here. But these 135 boots and the LS boot ends, they work really good with our wires. I've not had any issues with them. They clear the headers just fine. They deal with all the residual heat of having headers. So if you're going to build them up, you can still build them up with ACES. Not a massive deal. So these, these coils, these uh, 135 boots, a good set of headers and an LS swap vehicle. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a great install. So now that we get our coils mounted just so on our factory brackets. Um, they, they'll sit right here. And you can see on the valve covers that there is some tiny little recesses they kind of snap into. So you gotta sit there and fight the things forever and a day trying to put your bolts back in. But these guys will set up right there, looking good, looking mean, ready for action. And then you got your 135 boot right here. And it just, I mean, slips right on, no problem. You see what I mean about, you know, predetermining the wires right there. Like I just, I sit there and measured this up a while and got like the best angle, best length. So it's not stretching itself or damaging itself. So these guys, these things go right on there. You'll feel a little click, All right, Right about there, maybe. But you can see right here how they're clearing the headers and these things make a lot of heat. So you want to be protected. That's why we're using the ceramic ones. The, um, if you're using dielectric now, this is an interesting thing. A lot of people don't know that dielectric is, well, dielectric. So you want to put it a little bit on just the edge of the inside of the boot or on the ceramic itself, not on where the electrode end is because it's going to insulate it. If you put too much there, you're going to have a weird spark. You put it on the ceramic, it's going to protect it for any kind of carbon tracing or arcing or what have you not as the rubber gets older and degrades over time, which takes a very long time on ceramic boots that are so protected. So... So anyways, we'll, we'll put this boot on right quick and uh, we'll call that out of hands. Good to go. Get it lined up. You'll feel it kind of click. There's like a little recess in there. This one kind of pushes out a little bit because of how far it pushed it. But anywho, so we got that. Cool. Coils are on the brackets, setting on the valve covers, ready for bolts. We got spark plug wires in. They're all, nothing's touching the header. You can see on these swap headers, I mean, they are close to the steering shaft. We actually had to dent the headers a little bit in here just to clear it. So another thing to be mindful of, depending on like engine mounts and how you have to adjust your headers for everything to fit, if those engine mounts go bad, you kind of got to pre-plan for how far will this motor move down? Will it rock back and forth when you're launching it, et cetera, et cetera. So just be mindful of that because if that engine mount degrades over time, your headers will start touching here. You'll end up with either a binding steering condition or more unnecessary damage to some several hundred dollars worth of headers right there. Next for me, ECU, the AS2011 Jackpot Pro. This is drive-by-wire, trans-compatible, all good. Now, we are using a 4L60E. We are using drive-by-wire. And you can tell, just to verify, it does not say drive-by-cable on the back. If it says drive-by-cable, you cannot do trans-control with the ECU. This one, you sure can. I've already predetermined a spot to mount this. I put rubber isolation bushings here in this fender. This is actually from another ECU from a while back. We do a lot of testing with this vehicle, but it's gonna lay down just like this. 
There'll be a little bit of preload on the bushings because of the curvature of the fender, but all the way around the block, this thing is going to mount just fine right here. We've had it here for a while but previously, but this is where we set it on this blazer because of how the harness lays out and what it needs to reach. So don't flat mount it because underneath of it, it needs to breathe a little bit. There is some heat sink fins back there, and this there's a lot of equipment behind this that generates some heat, drivers and such. So this is actually a heat sink. So if you got a little bit of air underneath of it and it flows through, it's going to keep your ECU way happier. So as we're installing this, you want to just watch out for a lot of things, you know, open intake ports on your engine, so on and so forth, including this little risk factor here. Now, this is one of the hold down bolts right here for our coil brackets. It's been over tightened previously. Somebody's really, really added the extra to it right here. You see, I'm just with my just a bit of fingernail I got. I'm just pulling out little bits of aluminum that used to be a thread. Now it's super not. Now, there is still threads in the bottom of that hole I checked. But that was part of the valve cover at some point because somebody got a little overzealous installing this coil bracket last time. Not a big deal. Might have been one of my guys. See, they put my oil dipstick and my trans dipstick upside down too, and they know that bothers me. But just a risk factor, if you're if you're putting these in, don't just go over top. You know, the intake bolts are like 89 inch pounds. These ain't much more than that. This is a relatively small bolt. So, what is that? Seven foot pounds, I think. Somewhere around that neck of the woods. So you're putting maybe 10, 12 foot pounds on these things to hold them down. So just uh, just keep that in the back of your mind as you're installing these coils. So, And these brackets, there's lots of extra stuff in the way on this side of the motor. We've got dipsticks back here. We've got a heater box here, dipstick here. So use appropriate tools and appropriate methods and you should have a pretty successful install. Nothing too crazy. The uh, There we go. By the way, this is the one that doesn't have any threads really in it. It's only like two or three in the bottom, so i got to be extra gentle with it. Luckily, it's just a coil bracket. If it was totally gone, I would actually be forced to helicoil it and repair the thread appropriately. So if it was load-bearing in any way, if it's actually holding something on that was like a very, very important thing. Just maintenance reminders as we do this thing. I want to walk you guys through all just things to look out for to make a more successful install. Let's see here, we got that. And just like I said before, it's, you know, you kind of got to just a little bit. There we go. This one's the risk factor one here. Let's see. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Don't want to be too overzealous with that one. Like I said, that's damaged threads. Um, but we will be switching this over to Ace's, uh, Ace's valve covers, um, in the here, in the near future, because we got to tear this back down. We're going to go through a bunch of different cam combinations and we're going to upgrade this engine as we go. Different belt routings, a lot of videos on that. Different valve covers, different style intakes, a whole host of things. So as we do this, we're going to, we're going to film as much of it as possible to help, help the people out. So... Anyways, let's go ahead and get these plug wires on and we'll move on to the next step after that. So now that we um, we went through the intake and some of the how I got it laid out on that, um, this is just the title video for the whole the whole build here, but um, we got the coil brackets on, we got the coils mounted, we got the spark plug wires and boots and such made. This is uh, this is really wrapping up this first video of just some of the things, how to mount an ECU, where, where do you really need to mount it at? The next videos, we're going to go into the wiring harness and some of the layout and some of the risk factors in installing the wiring harness, and uh, we'll get to play with the multimeter just a little bit too. So hang around for that, and let's check out the next video. We're going to make the best video series on this and try to be as detailed as possible for you. So thank you.